based on what life is doing, based on what life needs. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I consider pH to be of fairly tangential relevance. Um, what's most important to me is that you make sure there's a nice spectrum of the critical elements present in the environment and that life is being fed and life will actually go out and get what it means when it needs it. Um, you can do this experiment where you take a, P a pH probe and you stick it in one spot in the soil and you'll see the pH will go from 5 to 7 to 5 in a 24 hour period. pH in the rhizosphere is constantly going up and down based on the activity of the soil life based on the needs of the plant. So there's one of your systems that's constantly modulating up and down and life is in charge of it. Life is managing it if you give life what it needs. Um, so you don't need to be bothering yourself with so much of this monitoring and testing and you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. You just need to create an environment where life can flourish and she'll take care of it. Um, so, all right. I think that's what I want to say about pH. Any questions? Comments? We're able to quiet after this. So these basically <laughs> regulate their own chemistry plant. They totally. have enough wisdom to do that that humans Highly. don't have that. Yeah. This is, this is, a, this is a, a, a multiple feedback loop system. Right. This is a linear static, you know, chemical abiotic system. Right. This is a this is this is the industry industrial, you know, linear mode. This goes back to what you were saying earlier about sterilized potting soil versus yeah. Vermont compost soil. Right. Any compost based potting soil is gonna have an entirely different you know reality than a sterile sterile medium. Yes, absolutely. So um, with that all being said, I think we can actually move on to the actual elements of the soil test. Um, we've got enough of a basic vernacular. Um, I feel like you've all gotten very quiet. Does it mean it's fine? Just paying attention. Okay. I do well with uh, feedback. So if you get a soil test back, like I got a soil test and the pH was five point. Nine. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't really focus on that at all. I should just put the minerals in that need to be put in. And when you when you look at the soil test, it'll tell you um, what your target level of calcium is, right. what your you know reported level of calcium is, and what your deficit of calcium is, based on the ratios that Albrecht to, you know determined. He said, really, if you get your calcium at about, so basically. You're trying to, you know, get a certain percent of these bonding sites to be calciums, and a certain percent to be potassiums, and a certain percent to be magnesiums, etc. Mm -hmm. And when you have that ratio, it seems like life flourishes in that range. Um, so that's what we're trying to do: um, is, is create that. And, and basically, when you do that, pH. your pH moderates itself. Yeah. Um, you may not, you may have a low pH and have plenty of calcium. You need more potassium. Or you have a low pH and you have plenty of calcium and potassium, you need more magnesium. So do you think a low, like, is a low pH an indication that your system is kind of broken somewhere along the way? It's an or indication it that just... you've got an empty tank. Okay. That your soil is worn and weathered and doesn't have enough nutrition, enough actual elements for life to flourish. You've got an empty tank. You've been driving all day and you've got to stop at the gas station. Right? You've been going for 500 years, white man, maybe it hasn't been 500 years up here, maybe it's 200 years, I'm not sure how long it's been. You've been up here cutting down the trees and, you know, tilling the fields and the hillsides and having the soil wash away. Anybody? Right? I mean, it's a couple hundred years of, of really destructive practices have caused the, you know, what was a deep, rich, you know, vibrant ecosystem to be a thin, worn subsoil, basically, in many, in many environments. We're down to the rocks and the subsoil. And that basically means your tank is empty. You don't have a lot of that nutrition that was built up over hundreds of thousands of years. Life will take care of it. Life will build the soil, but right. she operates on a different time scale than those of us who've got children who want our children to be fed well. Right. And we have to, you know, apply. This is why I think our technology and our science can be utilized valuably. Um, so, yeah. So if you're doing, you know, theoretically, if you're doing all these things right, yeah, you should be getting pH levels that are like. I mean, this one says seven. Yeah. I mean, is that? Um, so, but the sulfur level is low on this one. So right. you would, you know, that, that would, so a little bit of sulfur, if you fill the sulfur tank up, that 
that would bring the pH back down to 6.6. .6, right. Which would bring you back into that range. Um, so instead of just sort of being, you know, add limestone or add sulfur, which is a, a really simplistic ment mentality, right. it's more nuanced. It says, yeah, sure your pH is off, but this is why it's off. And this is this specifically what you can do, and this is how much. Um, it gives you a little more specificity and guidance. Um, so, <clears throat> all right, I'm getting intense looks, and people are waiting for the next step. So, people will just move on. <laughs> um, I believe the third slide says uh, something about um, 500 pounds per acre of um, is equal to 11 and a half uh, yes. thousand square feet. So, those of you who are working on a garden um, scale. Um, not on acreage, but on you know, uh, homesteading a gardening scale, 400, 500,000, 2,000 square feet. Um, I am going to be teaching you how to read a soil test based on pounds per acre. So you're going to need to work down from there how many pounds per thousand square feet, how many pounds per my, my garden size. So there's some quick cheats for you there. Um, uh, was it five pounds per thousand square feet equals two ounces per... Uh, five pounds per, per acre equals two ounces per thousand square feet. Correct. So, um, in many cases, we're going to be talking about a fairly small quantity of materials. That's all you really need to address this deficiency, but I just erased this picture over here of leaving spiral. It doesn't take much boron to fill the tank. It really doesn't take much. It doesn't take much copper. It doesn't take a lot, much of a lot of these things. They're still critical. How much salt does it take to take the soup from being totally bland to having all the flavors come together? Right? Half a teaspoon? It doesn't take much salt to have a massive effect. In the same case with these trace elements, it doesn't take much to have a massive effect. But if you don't do it, you're going to have bland soup. Even though you have great, you know, carrots and potatoes and everything else, it still isn't not going to come together as it should. Um, so your barrel analogy means that when you top off the boron, it moves that plank up, so the, the lowest part where it holds now water sulfur. now raised up. Yes, and sulfur is now the lowest one. Right. If you got a little bit of gypsum, right. then that one goes up too. And all of a sudden, you're not at 10 and 15 percent, you're at 60 and 70 percent. So minerals are no longer your limiting factor. Now you don't have to worry about minerals being a limiting factor. Now it's back to keeping your soil moist, keeping your soil aerated, and those kinds of things. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, so um, this next slide uh, has basically the secret to reading a soil test. Um, this is the thing that consultants charge money for, and you have to go to college for four years to learn. Um, and that is that parts per million times two equals pounds per acre. Everybody got that? What's this, second grade? No, first grade math. <laughs> two times one equals two. <laughs> um, so if you notice, your, your soil report has you know, phosphorus in parts per million, sulfur in parts per million, calcium in parts per million, you know, cobalt in parts per million. You don't ever apply gypsum or limestone in parts per million. You apply them in pounds per acre. So you need to be able to convert from parts per million to pounds per acre. And this is it. This is the conversion. This is the foundational piece of information you need. Other than that, you can actually logically figure out the rest. I'm going to walk you through it so you don't even have to figure it out. Um, but this is the secret. Um, effectively, it's considered that there are about 2 million pounds of soil the top 6 inches of an acre. Therefore, um, two parts per million equals um, one, one um, pound per acre. <clears throat> um, okay, so I have the example there of sulfur, I believe. Um, I said you need 75 parts per million of sulfur, uh, theoretically, in a soil. How much sulfur is there present in the soil test? 14? 17. 17. So we need 75. We have 17. So you can do it over here, over here. But 150 pounds per acre minus 34 pounds per acre equals 116 pounds per acre of sulfur. Need it. Everybody got this so far? This is nothing, nothing to be worried about. This is totally doable. 
This is totally normal. When you do this for copper, you do this for zinc, you do this for calcium, you do this for potassium, they're reported in pounds per parts per million. You've got your targets. Multiply them both by two. Subtract the you know the, the deficit, I mean the, the what's present from the target, and you get your deficit. Oh, and then you figure and that and then that tells you how much of each of these elements you need. And we're not done yet, because you don't ever find pure sulfur or pure calcium. You have to do the math on gypsum or limestone or copper sulfate. But we're we're halfway there. This you do this with every single element, right? Nothing complicated about it. Anybody? I should stop saying nothing complicated. Until everybody says this is not this is not complicated. <laughs> everybody, 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 everybody. Um, so the uh, second to the last slide on page one, on page two, has the uh, fairly complicated math regarding gypsum written down there. Um, you see a bunch of bullet points. Um, and then finally, in the summation, I believe it says that um, there are 23.5 um, pounds of calcium and 19 pounds of sulfur in every 100 pounds of gypsum. Whoever sees that. Um, so what that means is that so the gypsum is 19% sulfur and 23.5% calcium. Yeah? Um, and then you'll see, I think I've got it at the bottom of page 3, is the uh, what's present, like how much calcium, what's the percent of calcium in limestone, what's the percent of uh, potassium in green sand, what's the percent of phosphorus in phosphate. So I've got all these numbers already for you there on the handout. What's the percent of, ca of copper and copper sulfate, what's the percentage of cobalt and cobalt sulfate? So I don't need to worry about this complicated math. You can ignore the complicated math for anybody who's into chemistry and wants to talk about atomic weights. Remember atomic weights, anybody? Oh, yeah. Moles. Protons and neutrons and electrons. So the atomic weight of calcium is the weight of all the protons and neutrons in one atom of calcium. The atomic weight of sulfur is the number of protons and neutrons in one atom of sulfur. And so you figure out the, atom the percent calcium in gypsum by doing the atomic weights of each of the elements and then seeing what percent they are. Does that make sense? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, but for those who care or are curious, that's the, that's the logic, um, the technical logic of how you figure this out. Um, generally, it'll be on the bag. If you're going to be buying something from someone, they'll, they should know what the percentages are and they can, and they can tell you. Um, it may modulate up and down a couple percent, but this is the, these are just the general ballparks. So, um, so the math for figuring out how much gypsum we need, if we want to address the sulfur deficiency on this field with gypsum, this is like we're getting down to the brass tacks here, is you take this 116 pounds per acre. This is a, this is an algebraic equation. So this is the this is this is the one equation that you probably should take notes on and write it down, um, and then you can apply it over and over again. If you take you take the um, the pounds of the element needed divided by the percent concentration in the mineral you're going to be using, of the uh, mineral used. Which basically in this case is um, 116 divided by 0.19. Where got that? And how did you get 0.19? Where's that from? Because gypsum is 19% sulfur. Oh, I see. So the percent to concentration is 19. And the, the pounds of the element needed is 116. I could erase this board and start clear with, you don't want it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so um, this is to isolate sulfur, figuring how this much This is to sulfur figure out how many pounds of gypsum we need right. to address the sulfur deficiency. Okay. And then, we're, and, that, and then we can know how many pounds of gypsum do we need to address the sulfur deficiency. You can figure it out to the pound. 
Wow. But then with that, you'd also have to figure out what you need for calcium. Because if your calcium is already good, then you don't want to use gypsum. Which is why I'm using gypsum as an example, because that'll make that exact point. Right. Mm -hmm. Might have taken the course before. <laughs> Let's step ahead of us. <laughs> um, yes. <coughs> All right. You're raising these questions. Um, do I need to write that again over here or we can continue? We write it over here? Write it again. Write it again. Okay. I'll start with 116 pounds per acre sulfur needed. Gypsum is 19% sulfur. Which one is there for? Is it the three dots? Oh, I think this is right. like this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that there for? Yeah, there for. I'm going to say this is there for. <laughs> Therefore, we do 116 divided by 0.19 equals. Anybody got a calculator? I can do this in my head, but it's only going to be a round number. Mm -hmm. It would be similar to multiplying by 5. Multiplying by oh, I have a calculator. Hold on. Yeah, exactly. Right. Divide by 5, which is going to give you about 600. Right. So we're going to say plus or minus 600 pounds per acre uh, gypsum needed. That's 610.52. 610.5 to address sulfur deficiency. And as you said, gypsum is calcium sulfate. So we need to look at the calcium numbers now to see how much calcium we should, how much, how much gypsum we need to address the calcium deficiency. Where's following along? Very quiet. I'm trying to so gonna trust that everybody's paying so attention and following along. If you're not, if you're missing something, raise your hand. And just do it, please. I'm missing. So 116 parts per acre of gypsum. Sulfur. Okay, that's, oh, that's an S, okay. We did it over here. We needed, the target was 75. What was the report said was present was 17. Oh, I see. So time each times two is 150 and 34. So we need 150 pounds per acre of sulfur. We have 34 pounds per acre sulfur. So we have a deficit of 116 pounds per acre sulfur, okay. which is where that 116 came from. And then you have 19% sulfur in gypsum. Yes. So this is 116 over 0.19 equals 610 pounds per acre, right? Pound PPA. Pounds per acre. Gypsum. Gyp, right. Needed to address sulfur deficiency. So let's do calcium now, and then we'll figure out how much gypsum we actually should apply. Because what, was, it's, sorry. Go. what was the percentage of calcium in gypsum? It's 23.5%, which is also on the bottom of that page too. It says right. 23 and a half pounds of calcium in 100 pounds of gypsum. Bottom of the slide of page two. Bottom bullet point, or second to bottom. Yeah. Let me erase this. Okay, that's so I won't do this two or three times. It won't be this complicated with a few different elements, and I think you guys will basically get it. It's so like four by six steps. So basically, it's you're, you go from the target with what you have in your soil, and that's the deficiency, and then you factor the deficiency into uh, the percentage of whatever element is in present. Like with the gypsum and things. We're going to do it about four times. Okay. And you're going to get it. It's pretty simple. Just do it over and over again. Thanks. It's going to get simpler and simpler. Um, yes, basically yes. So uh, now with calcium, um, the percent, uh, the amount of calcium in this deficit is already recorded in that report. Mm -hmm. How much is it? I don't know. Uh, read the report. I don't have it. Oh, you don't yet. Did you? Yeah, give it a handout. All right. 25. 25 parts per million. 25 ppm calcium needed. 
So we do 25 times 2 equals 50 pounds per acre. Thousand feet. Yep. And gypsum is 23.5% calcium. So we do 50 divided by 0.235 equals about 200. Two twelve. Two twelve. Yeah. Two hundred and twelve pounds of gypsum to address calcium deficit. So the answer is what's that? It's a very different number of pounds of gypsum. Right. So we're going to do 200 pounds per acre of gypsum because that'll address all the calcium and some of the sulfur and then we need to find a different source to address the rest of the sulfur deficit. This is the logic, um, which is not very complicated. In this case, we'd probably do elemental sulfur because the pH is 7, which is a little bit high, and we know elemental sulfur drops pH. So elemental sulfur, so we, let's, we can do this all the way out. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go on a round number and say we've taken out a third of the sulfur. Um, so that leaves us, what, um, 75 pounds of sulfur we need, roughly, left. Should I make those mental jumps or do it all out? Do it all out. Do it all out on the point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Some people are like, yeah, go for it, I got it. Okay, there you go. And they like, why? Where'd you get that from? Um, we have to do some back math to figure it out exactly, but I'm going to do a ballpark and say we've gotten two-thirds of the sulfur need met through the 200 pounds of gypsum. Sorry, one-third of the sulfur need met. So we have two-thirds of the sulfur need left. And two-thirds of 116, I'm guessing, is about 75. Plus or minus? What's that? 80? Okay. So is everybody okay with me saying we need 80 pounds of sulfur now? You can, you can make that mental jump? You needed 116 We needed pounds. 116 All right. pounds of sulfur, and we got 36 pounds of sulfur with the 200 pounds of gypsum we're going to apply based on how much calcium. So how would I figure that out? I didn't get, that's the part I don't get. If you're dealing with calcium, how did you jump to sulfur? Because when right. you're applying gypsum, it has calcium and sulfur. Oh, gypsum is, that's what that slide says. Gypsum equals CaSO4. On page 2. Bottom of page 2. That's what all that complicated bullet points are. Gypsum is calcium and sulfur. Wait, SO is what? Sulfur? Sulfur and oxygen. Okay, got it. Now I got it. Oxygen, we, don't, we, we can ignore oxygen because there's plenty of it in the environment. We don't need to add it in the form of a rock. So even if that's part of the weight of gypsum, we're ignoring it. Oh, I see where you got from that. Okay, so it's the last point, point of that. Good. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. I'm just good looking. I'm not smart. Yes. <laughs> Charismatic covers for a lot of That's other it, shortcomings, right. doesn't just it? Get yeah. my look. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to make the, the. We're going to say we need 80 pounds of sulfur now, okay. left, after we've applied this, that much gypsum. So, elemental sulfur is 90% sulfur. So, we need 80 pounds of sulfur still. And. L to sulfur is 90%. So we need about 90 pounds of L to sulfur. Anybody using the calculator to can you check this one? 88 points. 88 points something. So we're going to say that we need, um, I would say, I do round numbers, so I would say 200 BPA gypsum and 90 ppa sulfur, elemental sulfur is the recommendation to address the calcium and sulfur deficiencies in the soil report. Um, Follow that roughly? Could you also, I mean, 
mean, this is getting away from the math, yeah. but um, what if you wanted to do limestone and elemental sulfur? Like, like what, why would you do that instead of doing lime and or what, is it equivalent? Uh, it would average out roughly yeah. the same. So, yeah, it's I mean, is one better than the other? Um, I'd like to do not more than 100 pounds per acre of elemental sulfur in general um, because it does have a fairly acidifying effect in the soil. So, as little elemental sulfur as I can use, right. and as much of all this stuff as I can use, okay. um, gypsum is a very available form of calcium as opposed to limestone, which is a very slowly available form of calcium. Okay. In many cases, people's soils are, have low pHs because they don't have much calcium and they have serious calcium deficits. So, I, gypsum is nice to put on as a general. You know, you're going to have available calcium in the spring, okay. um, but you, you could really go either way. You could totally go either way. Um, yeah, um, but you have a lot of freedom. And ideally, what you do is you ask the spirit of the land. You say, "These are my options that I come up with. What do you think? Anybody open to that? Douse it. Douse it. Talk to somebody who knows better. Anybody have a friend or secretly themselves is able to connect, communicate directly." Yeah, I think this is this is really the that's the the real answer is don't ask me, ask for land. <laughs> land knows better than I do. It's different in different situations. And land might say, actually I don't want ninety pounds, I only want forty five pounds of sulfur, please. Thank you very much. Um, and that's and if you can get to that level of sensitivity and subtlety, you know, with it's a pendulum or it's a intuitive or waking up in the middle of the night with the numbers in your mind, um, I don't care how you get it. Um, but that's really where the answer is. This is just going to put you in the right ballpark and give you a structure to trust what comes to you if you really moves. Um, <clears throat> how's that for a knockout answer? <laughs> 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 Maybe for the lazy ones among us, you know, including myself, there's also the intelligent farmer or intelligent, intelligent gardener. gardener who kind of has a website where you just put in where you do your test. Up there are various out. websites where you can plug in the data and they'll they'll spit out a um, report for you. Absolutely. The Intelligent Gardener has on where is it? I've got it here somewhere. Right here. This is this is yeah. It's intel this is a good sort of you know one size fits all basic textbook for these concepts. And they um, they have got a business where they sell minerals. And so um, some of the recommendations for how many pounds per acre of stuff to use I would think are too high, but it does correlate with the fact that that kind of thing. Anyway, there are online data sets you can use if you don't want to do the math yourself. Um, they're totally doable. There's another good book um, called The Ideal Soil um, by Michael Estera, which is bit all about how to read a soil test and how to make recommendations. So if this is a not a productive way for you to figure it out, The Ideal Soil is a really good book also. Yes? I have a question. Shoot. Being the Yankees that we are, and remodeling like we are, we have a lot of sheep rock, which yes. is gypsum, right? Uh, theoretically. Can it be powdered and used to... Um, I've been told that it matters where it was manufactured. Um, okay. There's a lot of Chinese gypsum which has heavy metals in it, and okay. would generally not be recommended. Yeah. Um, but if it's pure if it's pure gypsum, pure sheet rock, it, it, then it would be totally, totally usable. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and just as a general question, um, if you're doing this for the first time, never yeah. adding minerals to your field before, and yes. you add whatever the soil test said, you do yeah. when you're going to soil test again next year, do you find that it's significantly less the next time around? Or that you need to be on a, is it, you know, larger question. inputs for the first couple of years? Yeah. So if you look at page three, the last slide of page two is all of slide three. Page three is max applications per year. So in many cases, and if we proceed now forward to trace elements, we're going to find in many cases, the amount of trace elements that your soil probably needs is more than I'm going to say is your max application rate per year. So in that case, um, yes, it's a multiple year process. Um, I'm generally of the opinion that slow and steady wins the race, and that um, basically this is, I'm, I mean, I started as a music major in college, and I graduated with a history degree. Um, I got married and didn't have an ability to make a living, and so I, you know, quickly boned up on some agronomy, um, and I've been faking it till I make it. Um, so a lot of what I'm saying has come from me from elders, people who've been doing this for 20, 30 years, and I basically just picked up all their brains. 
Um, I said, Jerry, what would you say? Gary, what would you say? Arden, what do you think? Bruce, what do you think? And wrote it all down. And that's what I'm giving you here. Um, is their sort of received wisdom from all the farms they've been working with across the country and around the world, saying, you know, 500 pounds per acre gypsum, you really don't want to do more than that per year. Like, even if you need 800 pounds per acre, that's fine. 500 pounds this year, 300 pounds next year, check.